Pop quiz. Who is this? If you answered Olympic gold medalist freestyle skier Johnny Mosley, you are correct. It is Johnny Mosley. Hey, I'm Johnny Mosley. Here's another question. What exactly is Johnny Mosley doing right now? It's strange. It's as if Johnny is figure skating on skis. What you are witnessing is a rare glimpse of a lost athletic art that was once the pinnacle of freestyle skiing. It had judges, it had costumes, it had fans. It had a name, Ski Ballet. In the beginning, young freestyle skiers didn't just want to ski down, they wanted to ski fun. And they invented a new sport that would eventually make it all the way to the Olympic Games. Ski Ballet was born. Yeah, it just looked like a bunch of crazy stuff on skis. This is three-time world champion skier Bob Howard, a legend in ski ballet when the sport was in its 1980s heyday. What they didn't know then, they don't know now, and ski ballet is very difficult. I'd like to demonstrate, my knees are shot, so I brought in Johnny Mosley. I'm Johnny Mosley. They know. Ski ballet was a form of freestyle skiing and it had a couple different corporations. It had pole flips, spins, linking tricks, and we put it all together with rock and roll music. Early on we did some moves that were basically flex tricks where you go off your tips. And what it is is you flex your tip up and you spin around. Those are pretty difficult because you're balancing and you can hurt yourself real quickly. You can dislocate your knee in an instant. Here's Johnny doing a 720, which is two times around. We copied this from ice skating. And then he even goes to a higher level where he goes to a 900, which means he spins around two times, lands backwards. The lights in ski ballet were never brighter than when it was a demonstration sport in the Olympics in 1988 and 1992. But ski ballet was not long for this world. The spotlight dimmed when the games dropped it in 1994, and the whole sport went fully dark not long after. The DNA of ski ballet is actually in everything that freestyle is today. All the spins and moves you see in the slope style and the big air. We did all that from the very beginning. That's why I teach my students ski ballet moves. What I'm going to do, I come in and stop, and I just pull. So the next time you're on a chairlift and you spy Johnny Mosley down below, clad in a retro onesie and painting a ski masterpiece on a canvas of virgin snow, take a moment to realize that you're glimpsing the flight of a phoenix, a phoenix called Ski Ballet. When we were younger, I never thought I looked any different than her. And we didn't understand why people would be like, are you actually sisters? And we're like, yeah, yeah. obviously. My name is Hannah Brandt, I play for Team USA. My name is Marissa Brandt, and I play for Team South Korea. And we're, and we're sisters. sisters. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and I was adopted when I was four months old. I flew on a plane to the States, and that's where I met my parents. I started playing hockey when I was eight. And you started? I started when I was about five years old. We did everything together growing up, so really I chose hockey just to be able to be with her. But as I got older, I really learned to love the sport. We played together through high school, and then we went our separate ways for college. We were on opposite ends of the world. Every day we talk and text and ask about how each other's days went and games and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, being so far away, we stay connected somehow. I think it's a super cool thing that we're both going to the Olympics, playing for different teams and uh, in the same sport. I don't know how common that is, so I think it makes it that much more special for us, but I think for our family and friends that they have two teams to root for. Just so happy to be able to continue to play the sport I love and um, be able to go to the Olympics with this one. Hockey has shaped and, and influenced both of our lives growing up, so I can't imagine a better reason to be able to go back to my home country through hockey. 
For me, going to the Olympics has kind of always been a dream of mine, and then to be able to watch my sister do the same thing and to be able to go through this experience with her is just a dream come true. At the top of the track right before a race, I tell myself there's nothing I can't do. People have died doing this, and I know that, but going 90 miles per hour is so damn fun. My name is John Daly, and I'm a two-time Olympic skeleton slider. The skeleton track is roughly one mile long, and I'll slide up to 90 miles per hour with my face only one inch off the ice. You get a green light and you take off sprinting and you can't hear a thing. When I make contact with the sled, it feels like a place I've been my whole life. Last 15 years, I've made that same jump onto the sled. You could feel immense pressure as you're pulling five Gs. So my eight pound head now weighs 40 pounds. If you start to get stiff, you start to get scared, it's not gonna work. The sled's gonna break loose on you and you are gonna crash. You have to embrace the speed instead of getting afraid of it. At the bottom of the skeleton race, when I've had a really good run, I feel like I could run through the wall. You're so pumped up and that's why I love it. When I go down the slope, it takes me three seconds to get from zero to 60 miles an hour. I honestly can't explain what it feels like even after 15 years of doing the sport. My name is Sarah Hendrickson and I'm an Olympic ski jumper. Ski jumping is a sport where I go down a two-track slope at 55 miles an hour and when the slope ends I jump flying about a football field in length in the air. When I'm getting ready to go, the smell is of the fresh air from the trees and the snow in the area and the feeling of cold, brisk air on my face. When I put my goggles on, I know it's time to go. My eyesight when I'm going down the slope is right in front of the tips of my skis. My skis are bouncing up and down in the track against the ice. It feels like clatter. If you hear it, it's like a rumble. The flight takes three seconds but honestly, time slows down and it feels like an eternity where I get to enjoy flying. As I'm flying, I can't hear anything. It's completely silent all around. The wind on my body feels like when you put your hand out of a car window going 60 miles an hour, moving it up and down, you can feel the lift and drag it has on your hand. That's like ski jumping, but for your whole body. As I'm flying, I'm totally alone. I'm in control of all my senses and all my movements. It's the best feeling in the world. Bobsledding is a Winter Olympic sport where you have your driver and you have a brakeman, which is my position. The brakeman is mainly the engine to the sled. We get it going as fast as possible. I am Asia Evans and I'm an Olympic bobsledder. The track is about a mile long and full of twists and turns and can get up to 90 miles an hour. The moment I zip up my speed suit, I feel like a complete superhero. It's almost like I hear the theme music in my head. I'm ready to go.
as we're going to the track, picking up speed, we start to pull about five G's, which is five times the force of gravity. So it's literally what a fighter pilot experiences. It's like someone's jumping on you because out of nowhere, you just feel all this pressure on your lower back. It's a pretty noisy ride. My head is rattling throughout the sled. I'm trying to stay low. As soon as it's over, I can inhale and start breathing again.